Hey everybody, this is Joe Joseph and this is the DailySheeple.com's Daily News Brief. I want to get started with a Washington Compost article. Now, you know, I try to stay away from any site that likes to mm, call other sites perhaps fake news. But in this case, they did put out something that I found very interesting that they would even talk about in the newspapers, let alone what Seattle has done which I think is a trailblazing thing that should be taken up by every city in America. And that is creating safe sites for addicts to go and use their drugs, if that's what they need to do. Provide them a safe space. A real safe space, if you will. Not one of those, oh, I'm offended, safe space. Not like that, no. No. Something that will dramatically decrease the amount of overdoses and the amount of um, people that are just out and about in parks and everything like that. Listen to this. Washington Post. The Washington overdoses Seattle creates safe sites for addicts to inject illegal drugs. Uh, You know, and we can all debate how prohibition has worked wonders in America, because of course you know it hasn't. You can't show me or give me one example where prohibition has actually worked and worked effectively. Because where there's a will, there's a way. But I'll get into that in a second. Officials in Seattle on Friday approved the nation's first safe injection sites for users of heroin and other illegal drugs, calling the move a drastic but necessary response to an epidemic of addiction that is claiming tens of thousands of lives each year. Let me stop there. Did you know that uh, drug overdoses, especially with regards to opioids in the United States, is not a epidemic? Let me me rephrase that. With prescription drugs, because right now what they'll say is, oh, you know, the prescription drug abuse epidemic. It's not. As a matter of fact, you will find that double the amount of people die as a result of NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Your ibuprofens, your Tylenols, they eat your guts alive. When you go to the doctor, typically what they do, if you do like, oh, my back hurts, and they do give you something like a Vicodin or a Percocet, what does it have in it? It's got Tylenol. Why do they put Tylenol in it? So if you abuse it, it rots your guts, you die. That's really the reason why it's in there. They could tell you 50 other reasons why. That's not the reason why. They do it to curb abuse. They do it because if you, you know, People at that point really don't give a crap if they're going to eat away their kidneys or their liver. But I can tell you that that's one of the motives behind putting it in there. Now, the sites, which offer addicts clean needles, medical supervision, and quick access to drugs that reverse the effects of an overdose, have long been popular in Europe. Now, with the U.S. death toll rising, the idea is gaining traction in a number of American cities, including Boston, New York City, In Ithaca, New York, I'm going to stop there again. Back in the 1920s, the U.S. government had something called the Federal Poisoning Program. This was in response to prohibition of alcohol. So what the uh, feds did was go in and they would poison um, the alcohol that was going into the speakeasies. It killed tens of thousands of people, okay? But... What was it? Oh, it was okay because we were trying to scare people away from alcohol. It didn't work. They killed how many of their own citizens, their own fellow citizens? For what? For what? For booze. See, this is the mis- this is the problem. No, this is the problem with what we have here in America is this idea of I know what's best for you. And that is clearly not the case. No one knows what's best for you except for you. And your body is your property. And what you do with your property in this country is your right. And you cannot, cannot be told what to do. Well, let's say this. You can be told what to do, but you don't have to listen to it. Really, at the end of the day, it is your body. Now, it says, while opponents say that sites promote illegal drug use, Supporters say they can keep people alive and steer them towards treatment. They compare supervised injection facilities 
to the needle exchanges that became popular in the 1980s and 1990s as a way to stanch the spread of HIV and hepatitis C among intravenous users. You know, that's the other thing, too, is and what really bothers me about this whole thing is that they have medication available, drugs available to counter the effects of an overdose. Yet people, they don't make it readily available. It's absolutely and completely asinine. And it cannot, I personally cannot tolerate that. To know that there is an actual antidote and that tens of thousands of people die each year because they don't have access to this antidote. Unbelievable. Yet we live in the 21st century. We're supposed to be people that have evolved past barbaric ideas and behaviors. Yet here we are now. Seattle Mayor Ed Murray said in a statement, these sites save lives and that is our goal in Seattle and King County. Let me say that they poison, you know, and this this really comes back to what's the real motive here behind these drug laws and between uh, and behind the Controlled Substances Act. What it does is it gives the government a very easy way to put people in prison for money. That's what they do. They take this this stuff that you should have the right to do however you want to do it in your own home as long as you don't infringe upon the rights of others. Hell, do it somewhere else. It doesn't really matter. Again, don't infringe upon the rights of others. Make an antidote for this. It should be over the counter. I mean, think about it. What are you going to do? Get high from an antidote? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But what you can do is you can live. Let's say you make a mistake. Let's just say you're Joe Schmuckatelli and you don't understand some of the uh, risks associated with taking some of these drugs. What happens? You make a mistake. Should you die for making that mistake, especially when an antidote is readily available? I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, this is the problem, again, that we face in America, and it's because We've been sold a bill of goods, just about everything under the sun, everything under the sun, whether it's drug laws or anything else. This is the problem. This is the problem. So now, now, my friends, it goes on. It says, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, a record 33,000 people died from opioid overdoses in 2015. Friends, that is not an epidemic. 33,000 people died in 2015. Out of 330 million people, how many people died as a result of drunk driving? How many people died as a result of a bee sting? Let's compare those numbers with regards to this. It's not an epidemic. And typically when this happens, it always, almost all the time, always is because people are combining some things like, for example, opioids and alcohol or say, opioids and benzodiazepines. People don't understand the risk. They do it, and they end up killing themselves. Needlessly. Needlessly. The other thing is education. Look, we can go the current course and keep feeding the prison industrial complex, or what we can do is educate. Educate people as to the risks associated with this kind of medication, with this kind of... uh, you know, and the risk associated with it. And then what happens? Oh, all of a sudden things start going down. That's what they've done over in Europe. And it works. It absolutely works. Now, it goes on to say the sites are not currently legal under federal law, according to Kelly Deneen. But of course, nor is marijuana. Marijuana is not legal under federal law, yet 26 states have now legalized it in some capacity. Why? Because they see through the BS. They understand what the motive is, why the government's doing it, And now you have states like Colorado, Massachusetts, Washington, and others that are falling in line. Why? Why not cash in on this? Why not understand that you can't keep people from doing what they want to do? Where there's a will, there's a way. I cannot say that enough. And until we come to grips with this very simple fact, nothing's going to change. It's only going to get worse. 
Folks, the police state, you give them an inch, they're going to take a foot every single time. It's unbelievable. It says, in addition to heroin, the deaths are caused by powerful prescription painkillers. See, there they are. And fentanyl, a synthetic opiate so potent, a tiny amount can kill people within minutes, which they don't have to die. Why? Because there's an antidote. Unbelievable. It says, if you really want to bend this curve of death, safe injection sites are going to have to be part of the strategy. This according to Jesse Gata, chief medical officer of Boston Healthcare for the homeless program, which treats victims of overdose. It says in Seattle, the King County Board of Health voted unanimously earlier this month to endorse two sites, one to be located in the city and the other to be located in the surrounding county. Murray and King County executives, Dow Constantine, gave them final approval Friday. This is probably one of the smartest things I think I've seen a city do in quite some time. I mean, outside of states legalizing marijuana, this, my friends, is the next step. If you want to see the addiction problems start to recede, if you want to see the deaths associated with overdoses start to decrease, and you can even go so far as if you legalize it in some capacity to where these people have access to this and you can step them down, then what happens? You end up getting rid of the criminal element that's there. But you're going to get pushback from the federal government because they fund a lot of clandestine operations through drug trafficking. You see, because not only... Again, it's what it is is a circular thing. It it's a monster that perpetually feeds itself. You've got the CIA that works with the drug cartels that ships the drugs into the United States and then you have local, state and federal police that go in, they raid, they arrest, they keep the private prison industrial complexes fed. You get cheap labor at 25 cents an hour. And it continually feeds itself. The government is able to get military equipment manufactured very cheap, office equipment, bunk beds, mattresses. If you look it up, you can actually go look up. Look up Unicor. Unicor is one of the federal prison uh, complexes. Unicor makes a ton of goods that are sold all over the place. And they make a ton of money on it. Why? Because your labor is cheaper than any slave labor over in China. It's unbelievable. The scam. The war on drugs. And now we have a city, Seattle, that is starting to pull their head out of their butts. And coming to the realization, my friends, that prohibition does not work. But the state is always looking to screw with us somewhere in science. You know, science always takes things probably a little bit too far. And um, we're seeing that now. We're seeing that now. According to the Daily Mirror, I'm sorry, the UK Express, human-pig hybrid scientists hoping to create part man and part pig organs. Of course, you know, oftentimes they'll grow organs in pigs because they say pigs are very similar to the human body. But now, my friends, they are starting to do a human hybrid, human pig hybrid embryo that has been injected into a sow's womb as scientists push the ethical boundaries of science in hopes that they can create life-saving donor organs. Now, my question is, why can't you do this with stem cells? Because I've not only seen and read papers with regards to this, but also if you take a look at the work of Dr. Craig Ventner and what he did with the Human Genome Project, they were able to take DNA, take it from its analog code, digitize it, save it on a computer, and then using the four base chemicals, reconstitute it in an analog fashion, either through printing 
or through growing uh, things in a in a petri dish and or in a in an environment where they do it. And I I really can't tell you I haven't been in the laboratory when it's happened, but I have read the papers and seen some of the lectures on this, and I can tell you they're a lot farther ahead than growing these organs and pigs, which makes me wonder what the ulterior motive is of starting this whole push for chimeras. It says scientists from the Salk Institute, a biological research organization in California, have taken cells from pigs and people to create an embryo that was then inserted into a female pig. As part of initial experiments, several different types of human cells were inserted into pig embryos and petri dishes to determine which cells were the best match for the pig embryo. The human cells, which work best with the pigs, were infant ones. Oh, what a surprise there. Which have the potential to develop into all adult cell types known as pluripotent cells. Let me also say this. Of course, you know, you have the, the longevity push also here with the elites, especially, where they're doing like blood transfusions with children's blood because science has shown that when you do that, it has a rejuvenating effect. And now all of a sudden, you know, now we're growing organs using infant uh, cells. Again, they've already shown that they can do this with stem cells. So I fail to understand what they're doing here or what, what the ulterior motive is behind doing this with pigs and other animals. Now, it goes on to say... In the uh, publication, Futurism, lead author of the research, Isasupta is Belamonte said, this is long enough for us to try to understand how the human and pig cells mix together early without raising ethical concerns about mature chimeric animals. So really at this point, what they're doing is they're trying, you know, they're inserting cells. They want to see how this thing forms. I guess they're not taking it to the point where they're actually growing the chimeras yet. But I can tell you, that the road to hell is paved with good intentions, folks, and we are fast on the road to hell. It's getting hot in here, if you know what I'm saying. And it stops here for this experiment. And then what happens next? Oh, we just take it that step farther. And so on and so forth down the line until you have these human-animal Hybrids, as was in the days of Noah. Boy, I tell you what, I can tell you, I'm feeling that we're very close to some very big changes in this world. Whether they're for the good or for the bad remains to be seen. But I, for one, believe that we can advance in science without pushing some of these boundaries. We can have free energy without pushing the boundaries of atomic power. We should never have gone there. Einstein knew we should never have gone there. Saying, boy, we took a, what a heck of a way to boil water. Yeah, it's dangerous as hell. We can't get rid of the waste. So it just piles up everywhere. You know? So uh, the, the, the geniuses over the past 50 years or so, have decided to build most of our atomic power on fault lines. Because that's the most sensible, smart thing to do. That's unbelievable, folks. Ah, exciting times we live in, and the Daily Sheeple will be here every day to bring you news and information that'll get you thinking and prepare your family for what's to come. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's daily news brief, and I'll have one again for you manana. Have a good day, everybody. Take care.